is a car that is much hated by a lot of the car community, but in this video, we're gonna show you why the first generation of BMW Era Mini are really, really cool, super, super cheap, and is a car you should probably buy right about now before they start to increase in value. So this is the R50 generation, which is the first generation under the BMW ownership. And this particular one with the convertible is the R52. Now, if you had just the regular hatchback version that would, with the supercharger, that would be the R53. These came out in 2000 and were made all the way to 2008 in convertible version and 2006 in the hatchback version. The convertible of this generation of Mini debuted for the 2005 model year and features some really crazy gadgets and gizmos. For example, check this out. It has a tailgate. So obviously the um, hard top was a hatchback, but the convertible had a fold down tailgate. You can see it's rated here for 176 pounds. So not nearly as much as like a pickup truck, but honestly pretty good for a tiny car. But that's just where the weirdness begins because Mini wanted to retain some of the practicality of the hard top. So this convertible top does some pretty wild things. There are latches on both sides of the convertible top and check this out this feature allows you to drive with the convertible top propped open like that so you can have longer items sticking out of the back i.e surfboards or snowboards or well snowboards would probably be pretty cold because of course this is a giant crack into the inside of the vehicle you can also move the parcel shelf into a few different positions and then latch it back into place now the convertible top won't go down unless these latches are engaged but even that is pretty funky on these older minis. Now the convertible top on these minis is actually really nifty. So you have the buttons up here on top that operate the top and then next to them you have the rear windows which will lower the rear windows. But the thing that I like about it is you can just forego all of that, just push the top button and look at that. If you ever miss having just a sunroof, you can have just a sunroof and have the rest of the top still up. So you do really get the best of both worlds. But if you want that top to go down all the way, you just hit it again. It drops all the windows down for you and then lowers that top all the way. Now with the top down, you can see it folds into a little sandwich here on the rear deck, which is kind of nice because you don't lose any storage space with the top and the down position. And you can also see the rollover protection, which are these chrome plated bars in the rear here. Of course, these are just plastic covers and you've got the real deal underneath these. Now, if you want to get under the bonnet of this mini, you actually have to go over to the passenger side to pop the hood. And then not only that, but a lot of people will pull it open and be kind of searching around and searching and trying to look forever and you don't realize it's all the way over here by the headlight to be able to pop that hood and the other thing that i think is really interesting this must be one of the last cars to come with the headlights still attached to the hood because right after that they actually changed the crash standards where they had to mount the headlights to the, the body it couldn't be on a movable part and then you notice that hood scoop that was up there it's actually functional it forces air right into that supercharger now that supercharger feeds a 1.6 liter four cylinder engine this is a transversely mounted four cylinder just like the original mini of course and it's rated at 168 horsepower of course the non-s model had a naturally aspirated version of that same engine. Now this engine is called a Tri-Tech engine. It was built in collaboration with Chrysler and the NA version of this engine was used in like European Chrysler Neons. Fun fact, actually, that's a little bit of piece of trivia there. Um, and then they did a supercharged Dodge concept. I think it was called the Hornet concept that used this engine, but no other Chrysler Dodge products use a supercharged engine. Anyways, another kind of cool thing about these engine compartments is that because the whole hood is a clamshell hood, you have pretty decent access to get at stuff however to really do a lot of the service items you have to take the whole front end off it's called service mode the bumper comes off the radiator support the radiator comes out it's kind of a pain in the butt and another kind of fun thing about these engines is that the uh, the washer fluid reservoir fill up is located there on the passenger side and then you have a separate fill up on the driver's side for the windshield washer squirters pretty cool thing there and brendan talks about the headlights staying in the hood or the bonnet when you open it up um, it's kind of problematic though, because a lot of people will just slam these closed. But if you do that, you run a good risk of actually damaging your headlights because uh, these are pretty expensive Xenon units. And if you just slam them, there's a good chance you'll break them. Now, Brendan, it's worth noting, you have owned a couple of these. 
Well, this is my second of the R50s. Um, I had the second generation of the BMW Minis. I had the coupe version of that. And uh, as cool as that was, I just um, kind of always lusted for my old one. <laughs> yeah, there's something really special about these early Minis. I think it's the size. I think it's the design. This is before they went all like bubbly and blowfish on us, remember? Right. Um, and I think it's just like the attention to all the fun little details. Absolutely, yeah. This was, you know, when um, I think Rover was actually still developed. Wasn't it Rover? Yeah, they were in the picture. Yeah, yeah they were in the yeah, picture. I think Rover was starting to develop a new version of the Mini when BMW came in and well, bought them. I talked to one of the guys actually involved in that situation. Yeah. And people like to think, oh, well, Rover had a big play in the development of this car. And they did at first, but it was such a cluster F that, <laughs> that BMW had to come in and like be like, okay, we're doing it this way. Because really? they, they were all over the board, nothing was getting done, people were not doing what they were supposed to be doing. Um, but it's still kind of cool to think that they had some say in this model. Sure. And, you know, it's... I think I, I may be going out on a limb here, but I, I've driven your classic Mini, and I still think this is the one to buy. I always wanted one of those. I looked at them. They look so cool. Uh, they're they're quintessential classic Mini, right? But after driving yours, it just it's it's a blast to drive, but it's just so compromised compared to this generation. I have to agree, actually. I think this is the sweet spot in the Mini lineup. First of all, they're way cheaper than classic Minis here in the States. Oh, yeah. They're still very small, but they are big enough where if you are like six feet tall and you scoot the seat back, you're going to have plenty of room. Yeah. Um, and they're still kind of weird and quirky enough and funny enough that they're, they're, they feel really special. Now, an easy way to discern the S, first of all, is that hood scoop on front, but out back you get these center mounted exhausts, which kind of look like little beer cans out the back, which Tommy told me once that it was actually part of the design team that was in a rush to try and fix or finish the uh, the model and just kind of shove beer cans on there, but they liked it so much that it made it all the way to the production model. And then not only that, but it has a really unique sound to it that Mini gave a little pop and burble from the factory. <laughs> Sounds pretty nice, I think. So in this Mini, they went and harkened back to the original by giving it this center-mounted speedometer. Now, some of these can be had with the navigation system, which kind of takes place of this center-mounted speedometer and moves it over here as a second pod. But I really think if you're shopping for one of these, the one to have is the one with the center mounted speedometer because it's very unique and very distinct to this Mini. The whole interior on this Mini is so cool and retro and it's actually aged really, really well. That's probably my favorite part about this car. It's just all the funky design elements, but check out this center stack. Now it's made up of three individual modules. This top, top module is the radio and it's gonna depend on the model, which radio you get, but it's a pretty clean, simple, easy unit to get. You can also get it with iPod connectivity, but of course the 32 pin iPod or whatever it was, not the new stuff. Underneath that is the climate control. Now you could get these cars with automatic climate control, but this one has a manual system, works pretty well. You've got a little switch there for the fan, button for your AC. And then this is my favorite part about these minis is the line of switches. And these are just fantastic. They're toggle switches. Brendan's are a little bit wobbly. They're not all supposed to move like that, Brendan. Um, but these are really, really cool. And it's nice having a car like this, which has all of the switches configured. So we have both the front and the rear fog light, for example, which is awesome because if you, for example, didn't have the rear fog lights, it kind of looks like a, a person with missing teeth. <laughs> so it's nice having all the options here. Now, one of the big drawbacks of this Mini is the cup holder situation. So I have, I have here just a bottle of water uh, from a tea bottle and you can see that these cup holders that they gave us from the factory just do not work. And Mini was aware of that. They got a lot of complaints about it. And so they actually put a bigger cup holder here on the side. However, mine is missing it. And it would fit that bottle. It would just sit right here and kind of rob some space from the passenger compartment. But that's not where the cup holders stop. So you actually have a center mounted one here in the back, but that as well is too small to hold this bottle. And then they went even further and inside the glove box gave you two other cup holders that are also too small. So they really are only for the, the tiniest of cans. Now, one thing we do need to talk about is the reliability because these cars did develop a reputation and that reputation follows them through today. That's why they are still affordable. But yeah. if 
you buy, especially a later R50, R52, R53, they seem to do much better than the earlier ones. Yeah. Where they had a lot of issues in the early ones. Um, and, I mean, a lot of the big issues by the time now that they're 15 years old have been well addressed. Yeah. Well, and the other thing to avoid, too, is the CVT version. So if you get the, the non-supercharged with the automatic, those are actually CVTs, which I think you pointed out to me before, has pretty much a 100% failure rate yeah, on exactly. those transmissions, right? But if you get them and they're well cared for because maintenance is key with these, uh, if you get them and they're well cared for, they can be just as reliable as you know, a GTI or any other sort of European sporty type car. Yeah, and especially after 05, manual transmission and Cooper S, they went to a better transmission, um, which is really, really good. Yeah, it's six speed manual, and let's give it some beans. Listen to that supercharger. Yeah. Now it may not sound like much having under 170 horsepower, but keep in mind, you know, if you got the coupe or the I'm sorry, the hatchback version of these, they only weighed about 2,700 pounds, and getting the convertible adds about 100 pounds to it. So they are pretty light. Yeah, and by modern standards, they're they're not fast. Sure. There's just no way around it. But what makes them so fun is because they're so small, it really feels like you're zipping. And when you add to that that fantastic supercharger whale, it really is just a phenomenal experience, right? It is. Yeah, and. I have yet to find a car that has the handling characteristics of this. You can take a turn way faster than you think you could, <laughs> and this thing just feels planted like it's on rails, and it just hugs the corners and goes right through. I mean, there are certain points that will wear and fail. For example, these had like a plastic clutch slave cylinder, which was not very good. Um, they also need supercharger services every 90, 100,000 miles, which is a pretty big job to do it properly. So. Yeah, there are costs involved for sure. Yeah, and in my first Mini that I had, I had that thing for about two years, and I went through three power steering pumps. Ah. They actually had a recall on those through 05, but I had an 06, so I wasn't affected by the recall, but I was affected by the poor design. So what they did was the fan that cools the power steering pump was exposed to the underneath, and if any little rocks or pebbles get in there and stop that fan from spinning, your power steering pump will overheat, and and now you're out 800 bucks. There you go. Let's talk about some of the cool configurability on the inside of these minis, because that's really what made these cars special, is everything was an option, and everything could be spec'd exactly to your taste. So for example, this car has leather seats, and it has heated seats, but it doesn't have steering wheel controls for the volume or the tune, but it also means that it doesn't have cruise control. So this mini was like 30 plus thousand dollars back in 07, which was a lot of money, and it didn't have cruise control. But it also has, for example, like the chrome interior line, so you've got like the chrome bezel around the tachometer which is a nice touch by the way that they give you a tachometer here right in front of the driver with a little information computer so you can see what's going on but what I love about these cars is everything's overstyled even the stock so BMW could have used their off-the-shelf stocks but they didn't they gave you these fancy silver stocks that look like something out of the Jetsons even for example the air vents right they're not standard air vents you got these little twist knobs and you can spin them around and they're just so fun and quirky and all and it's just fantastic but my favorite touch is actually the little tiny light on the right side of the right stock that lets you know when you're low on washer fluid. All right, Brandon, let's check out the rear seats of this Mini. Yeah, they, I think, you know, for as small of a car as it is... It just bonked my head in the face. Oh, jeez. <laughs> bonked my head in the face. That doesn't make sense. Bonked myself in the face. You really rattled your noggin there. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you can see I'm not a small guy, and I can fit in the back seat, and I can fit in the back seat with a friend as well. So this, you can actually comfortably seat four people, uh, you know, with the top down. I don't know, with the top up, you might be scraping up against the top, but it's still a pretty comfortable place to be, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, the, the people in the front do have to sacrifice a little bit of leg room. Uh, also worth noting, with the top up, these cars have terrible blind spots because they have these huge swaths of kind of black vinyl or canvas in the way. Uh, but honestly, could be worse. Look, Blaze is driving. <laughs> He's ready to go. You gonna take us on a trip, Blaze? Let's go, Blaze. So, Brendan, how much did you pay for this 07 Cooper S? So, this one I only paid 6,000 bucks for, but it only has 60,000 miles on it. So, you know, and, and I think I got a really good deal on it. If 
someone were to buy this not at a dealer auction, which is where I bought it at, you'd probably expect to pay seven, eight, maybe even $9,000 for one of these because they are starting to go up a little bit. Yeah, interesting. And especially like a John Cooper Works or even a GP are really commanding big money. But the standard Cooper S, even in coupe form, right, if you just get the hatchback, are really still very affordable and are a ton of fun for between five and maybe $10,000. Absolutely. It's going to be kind of hard to beat the fun that you can have in this car i mean think about the things that it competed with right like the gti mm -hmm. this was just as fast yep. zero to 60 as the gti except it handled better sure. in my opinion and smaller you know and it was just as fast as a mazda miata except you had more practicality so it's it's really a good bargain yeah well let us know what you guys think in the comments section below as always has been tommy and brendan we'll see you in the next video